Hello, this is Brian Rowe with Mythic MTG Tech number 312, looking at Conspiracy, Take the Crown, and the top 10 new cards that are in it. This is a really cool set. I was really worried about this, and Watsi has done a really good job of mixing in some great reprints along with some cool new cards that may even impact Eternal formats, which is going to make this a wonderful set. A lot of people are comparing this with Eternal Mass and they shouldn't. The print run on this is going to be much, much, much higher. I'll cover that a lot more in my financial video. Uh, this video, though, is going to focus on the really cool new cards that Wizards of the Coast has put into this set. I will have a top 10 reprints list coming out a little bit later this week also. We've got a lot of conspiracies in here. These are fun cards that people are going to really enjoy adding to their cubes. I didn't add these to the top 10 list as I'm not a giant draft player. I do enjoy these though, and they make cubes a lot more fun. There's one that I really like though, and this almost seems like R&D was thinking, hmm, how do we fix mana so that nobody has the issue of mana problems ever again in the game? And instead of the Vancouver Mulligan, I would have been happy with something very similar to this, where you can exile cards from your hand to turn them into basic lands. Maybe even start one card less. I would be happy with that. It would get rid of the one horrible part of the game, which is not being able to cast any of your spells ever. It would change mana curves drastically. And from a deck building perspective, this is gonna be the most fun one to draft and play with because it alters the way that you build a deck entirely. You can have multiple colors, you can deal with some really cool stuff overall. I hope that they sometime consider something similar, not this powerful, uh, that allows you to exile cards to grab basic lands. That would really fix the non-interactive games that you occasionally see in Magic. You'd still have to build a good curve, you'd still have to build a great deck, but you wouldn't lose for not being able to cast anything ever. We've got some really fun looking draft cards in here also. I didn't put any of these on the top 10 list, but they do give you a lot more interaction in draft. And for those people who draft at least once a week, if not several times a week, they add a lot more to drafting. Drafting is really a skill in and of itself. It is a different game. And I'm glad to see more cards that are really aimed at that casual draft community. Two honorable mentions that didn't make the list here are your over-the-top blue spell here. It it costs nine. I like the effect on it, but it's a win more. It's a giant group game card. It's fun, very cool. A foil one would be nice if you're playing casual EDH. And Throne of the High City. This one is very interesting to me because you almost always want this over a waste. Unless you're dealing with non-basic hate, this gives you the ability to start drawing cards. If you've got an aggro deck to draw a lot of cards, this is the design space that I really want to see a lot of cool things happen in Magic. Lands that you can get rid of later on for spell type effects. The number 10 spot here, I've got the new Earthquake. This is clearly an EDH card. This is one more reason for people to avoid playing Mana Rocks that aren't over the top powerful because this semi board wipe comes with destroy all artifacts at the five casting cost and put in a giant lizard at the 8-8. I hope the token looks really cool. Number nine spot here, I've got a hate bear kind of card. It's a card that stops your opponents from drawing massive cards, from playing cards like Brainstorm. I don't believe this is actually strong enough to throw into a legacy deck, but it is a very solid play fair police type card for your EDH decks. The foil on this could look really cool. This is one of those answers that if you can get it into play at instant speed, you can do really nice stuff with it. Number eight spot here, I want this card to be amazing as a forecaster. I want it to be eternal playable. It is not because it's only a 3-3. Haste, death, touch, those are nice things. Become the monarch, that is wonderful. Beginning of the upkeep, get some assassins, very nice. But why did it have to be a 3-3? Make it a 3-4, I might be able to find a place to play it. I don't think this card is really super over the top for modern even, and it's not gonna be modern legal. 
cool card, great potential commander. This is conspiracy. We like drafters and we love EDH players. Number seven spot here, I've got another possible commander with a cool draw effect on it and the ability to produce lots of mana. I really like this card. Great commander. I'm going to be looking for a foil one and giving it a try in my mono green EDH deck. Genzo, another really cool commander here with a nice ability on top, especially if you've got another red player or a colorless player at the table. Very cool being able to get some card advantage out of the creatures that deal damage to other players. You could even use this as an alternate win condition as a mill effect. The number five spot here, I've got Stunt Double. This is Clone with Flash, Strict Upgrade, great card. I'm gonna enjoy playing this in EDH decks. Your control decks that don't want to tap out really want cards like this. Clone is so much better at instant speed. Cool card, very, very fun. Number four spot here, I've got our new Planeswalker, Kea, Ghost Assassin. And I am super happy about this idea of having an alternate foil for her. I wonder if it's gonna be super rare or how that's gonna work. Whatever it is, it looks super cool. Now, is she Eternal playable? That's the big question everybody is asking. You have to compare this to cards like Jace the Mind Sculptor to get to Eternal playable or Niari. And I don't think she's Eternal playable, but she's gonna be a lot of fun in EDH because of the way she's written. She's each opponent loses two life. Each opponent discards a card and you draw a card. This is a fun multiplayer card that is going to be very popular amongst the casual. Now we're starting to get into cards that might be legacy playable. Dreddy. Ooh, three casting cost Planeswalker. That's sweet. That's a turn two Planeswalker in a lot of decks, especially when, especially when you can throw out Signets super quickly. I like the idea of playing Duretti in a Tez deck. Jace has been holding up those spots in the Tez decks and I actually don't like Jace that much compared to the idea of having Duretti. This could slot in really well. It does mean you have to play a third color, but it gives you another wing condition. It gives you a way to keep yourself alive. Potentially this could be a really cool Planeswalker and I look forward to brewing with Duretti. Death and Taxes is the clear winner out of this set. Ooh, Chalice of the Void on a body. Yes, it doesn't hit creature spells, but it's amazing. It says that as it enters the battlefield, choose a number. Now it's very, very important that it doesn't say when, it says as. You cannot respond to the choosing. If it's already in play, you're in trouble. It stops spells from being cast. It doesn't counter them. It stops abrupt decay. It stops all the one casting cost things you would ever want to deal with. It stops show and tell or allurin. This is the type of answer that you want main deck in death and taxes, especially once you know your meta really well and you can name what your opponent is playing just off of their fetch lands and dual lands. Beautiful card, mythic. You're gonna want at least one of these and maybe four in several different decks. It's come out pretty high, it's gonna stay high. This is one of the few cards that I'll be trading for over the next two weeks. I'm gonna wait for the price to maybe drop a little bit before putting cash into it, but I'm definitely trading for it really early on. Very, very cool card. Number one spot here, I've got Recruiter of the Guard. Wow, this is Imperial Recruiter in white. Death and Taxes is super happy. It slots into Allurin. Allurin has jumped from like a $5 to $10 card to a $30 to $40 card because of this one pickup. Now, the choke point for Allurin decks is no longer going to be Imperial Recruiter. It's going to be the dual lands. So Allurin decks are still going to be really tough to build, but they're going to be much easier because you don't have to buy that $200 Imperial Recruiter. This fetches everything that you want out of death and taxes. Two or less grabs everything. Wonderful, wonderful card. I look forward to playing this. I am trading for a playset and would recommend picking up a playset at their current price. It's gonna be a long-term great card. Actually, I'll cover the financial stuff in my upcoming financial video, but this is a card that long-term is gonna be really, really popular, playable in Legacy, 
and a playable in Commander, a wonderful inclusion in cubes, pick up foils early. Long term, this is a great card to have. For more opportunities to become the Monarch, subscribe to the channel. Thank you to everybody who's over there supporting the channel on Patreon. We've got some great people who are helping out, making sure that I'm able to continue to make content. Please consider becoming a patron if you would like to see more videos more often and higher quality. Until next time, choose the cards wisely.